Okay, so what we have right here is a Ford 302. This is the roller block that we pulled out of the 67 that we built uh, several years ago. <laughs> sitting on the engine stand well it's time we make an engine run stand and we're going to advertise a product that was sent to us for the top of this intake right here so let's go ahead and get started on our engine run stand okay here's our engine now the way we're going to make this mount we're going to make it mount using the original uh, engine mounts from ford so it's going to be basically a tube to go in here and the bolt will go through that'll be what mounts it up here in the back we're going to be making some sort of a mount to mount the back of the engine block to the actual stand and we're not going to be using a bell hauser for the starter bell housing we're going to be using a bracket built just for the start of the mount and again with the same side and of the mount so here's what we got we got a bunch of inch and a quarter here it'll be plenty big enough for what we're going to be doing with it um, i did pick this up at the scrap yard just to use the tank on it but one pull it cranks right up and it runs excellent so I don't, I'm not gonna tear this apart because this is a good generator. 15 bucks, I mean, hey, can't beat that. So we got that um, air pressure tank here that we picked up. I've already stripped it all down to the top. So now this right here is what we're gonna be building for our fuel system. That'll be powering the fuel system for the engine. And over here, went to Northern Tool for $17. We picked up this kit of four casters. And you, you think, well, that ain't gonna be able to hold up the weight. Well, four pack, 1,200 pound weight. That engine right there is nowhere near 1,200 pounds. Okay, now we got our small block off using our handy dandy little TYM T254, yeah, T254. We've got it sitting here. Now we can our, uh, start getting on our engine mounts, exactly how we're gonna do it. The first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna measure back. I'm gonna get at least about 12 inches away from the back of the block here before I start my panels going up for my gauges. And then on the front, I wanna be able to have enough clearance going from the front to put my radiator right here, but to still be about stock for this right here, but enough clearance further away where if I decide to give a bigger block, uh, such as like a 390 or something, <laughs> I can still use the rack for a larger engine. Okay, this is the basic structure I'm gonna do on the bottom. I've got two foot centers and 44 inches on the length. That should give me enough room for me to have a radiator, the engine, and then the mount for the rear, and then my stand for all my controls. Now this is what I've came up with. I've cut four two footers and I've spaced them out right here. This is just to give it extra strength in the center. Now I'm building the part where my gauges and my switches and controls will be. So I just made this little square piece right here, just long enough to put some gauges and my switches. And then this right here, I basically weld on each side. And then I'll get a piece of aluminum and bend it to cap over top of this and then put the holes for my gauges. So I'll just tack this right here together. And then this right here will be cornered at a little bit of an angle coming up off of this right here for my gauges. So there we have it. It's all welded together. I was just checking it out on how I wanted to make my mount for my fuel tank to mount up underneath it. So right there, this is what I was checking now. The fuel, fuel tank will be mounted up underneath my control mount. Now you can see where I've welded that panel to the rear section of where the engine run stand is gonna be. I welded it right along that on both sides. So this right here is gonna be my panel for my gauges. So now I can go ahead and fasten that to the length bar, uh, bars, basically, that run all the way to the front. I've got it laying on its side now, so you can kind of start to see it coming together. And I've laid it on the side, I've been using my square, and I've just been using it to look all the way down this and make sure that right there is straight all the way down. And then I'm gonna go ahead, put my piece in. So there's our basic stand platform for our gauges, our height here. I don't have those welded in yet, but this is our basic stand for our wheels. So now I'm gonna weld this piece right here up exactly where I want the mount to rear of the block. And once I have the rear of the block exactly where I want it, I'll measure up to where my mounts are gonna be. And then I'll center this one to where the mounts are and run off of this for the mounts. I made this little plate right here, the half inch steel. And it's gonna be the mount right here to the top. That's what's gonna mount the rear section of the motor. It's gonna mount right there at the top of the center. Okay, I've got the engine in place. 
course that's where my mount's gonna go from there up to there i just found this little piece that i had sitting around now working on the engine mounts these right here are gonna go through this piece here be welded and these are gonna slide right down in through the top just like so and a bolt will go through there so gotta weld those right there right there in place and those it's welded will go right up in a place right through there okay so now i've got those welded all the way around there I can take my sleeve, slide it in. Of course, it's gonna be a little hard to do with one hand. So I'll just do it like this. Best I can. And right there it is. That right there is the engine mount. So now I'm just gonna measure from there down to where I want it, which I'm gonna put it from here over here to a slight angle. And then this right here is gonna keep it from spreading the frame apart. I weld that in. So now it's just measuring from there down to where it needs to be and then welding it. So I'll go ahead, get the other side on. Now you can see where I've got it on both sides. So now I'm gonna weld this center brace in and weld those in right there. And then once those are in place, I can work on getting this rear one right here fixed the way I want. Now with those right there welded in place, I started here on the back section and I welded it all the way around that pipe. So I've got that right there to mount the center of the engine. And then that one to mount up to the engine mount. So I've got plenty of room between my flywheel and up here, I've got enough room to go from here out for my radiator. Now going back here, I decided I would use this style battery and I've made these little L. This is just some L angle iron that I had and I put it about six and a half inches to the top from the bottom. This right here fits that battery perfect. So this is where my battery box is gonna go. This right here, I'm gonna put a flat piece of steel in it and this is where I'm gonna be mounting uh, maybe some of my wiring. I uh, just have to wait and see. I uh, thought about putting maybe the solenoid down here. Um, but I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see about that. But this right here is just going to be a flat piece of panel right here. Just for if I need to put anything right here. But there's my battery. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the engine loose. Flip it over and put my casters on. Now we have a good look at exactly what it looks like. My engine mounts. And my battery's gonna go, my panel right here. And it's it's pretty light, like that's one handy. Easily pick it up. It's very sturdy. So now time for casters. Okay, now the husky tank. I've cut all the top pieces off, welded those two holes up. This is gonna be my fuel line hose for my fuel line. I'm gonna cut this hole out for my to put fuel in it. And then I welded it up like that right there. This right here is going to slide up through this bar right here, which will go right underneath my gauges. Now you can see it with it mounted. I got clearance on both sides and it's going to be right there underneath my panel. And right here where this is, it's going to come off and I'm going to have an electric fuel pump, which runs to the carburetor. Okay. Now the moment of truth after I've made my bends. All right, there it is. It covers over my angle iron right there. Now what I'm gonna do here is put some self-tapping screws in it because, you know, I'm gonna paint this. I don't want this right here to be painted. Plus when I go to need to pull it off to do some work on it, to put my gauges in it, it'll be easy just to pull it off. So that's what I'm gonna be doing there. Now you can see the engine is back in place. We've got the battery sitting in place there. And I have my aluminum radiator over here. I'm getting that uh, with my fan because I want to make sure my electric fans 
we're going to be a distance enough away from the water pump pulley so now i'm going to be making my bracket off the front for my radiator now to make the mount for the radiator i've drilled my hose and i've used a 3 8 tap to tap them so that i can mount them up just like a factory car would be basically in those holes right there that was already dremeled out so but tap three eighths put a bolt right here and that'll hold the radiator in place so there's my radiator bolted into place now i've just got to make my brackets i'm going to do a bracket from here going up to an angle to connect to this so that my radiator gets a little bit more height to it so that i can easily connect those hoses okay i got the radiator mounted it's on there really good now it sits up out away from the stand it sits out five inches from the stand got plenty of room in between my engine and my cooling fans i'll have access for my radiator hose to go straight down in here and from this one here go into here of course that's from the alternator but i'll have those so now the stand is pretty much complete i do believe that's going to be it so that's pretty much all it is. It's, it's, of course, it takes all day to do, but I've got the radiator mounted. I've got my frame built, my mounts built, my battery box built, my fuel tank mounted where I cut it off of an air compressor, piece mounted for my gauges. And that's pretty much the gist of the hardcore engine run stand right there. So now the fun part is going to be taking it all back apart, getting some gauges. I've ordered the gauges, but they ain't come in yet. Getting the gauges, getting all my electronics, my wiring, uh, getting all the wiring ran and plumbed, and taking all this back apart, painting everything, and then getting it all back into place and wiring it all up. Okay, so that's going to be it. it it's pretty much been my day project today. Uh, pretty much getting this engine run stand built, inch and a quarter tubing, um, air compressor tank, just some stainless steel that I had, and there it is. But that's going to be it for this video on building the engine run stand. In the next video, we're going to have this thing completely finished, wired, and we've got a max speeding rods four barrel carburetor that we're going to be putting on this engine, firing it up, and testing that carburetor out. That was the entire point to building this engine run stand was to test out their carburetor. So we have a brand new small block Ford 302 behind us. It's got a trick flow. Um, here's the spec sheet here. Trick flow cam, uh, 339 at 542 rocker ratio, one to six rockers. We're going to test it out and see how she sounds. But until next time, I appreciate everyone who's watched the uh, video, checked out the channel. And as always, I'll catch you on the next video where we're going to have this sucker already painted, the engine back down, wired, and then we're going to test fire this engine up. Thanks for watching.